Good morning to all traders and welcome to this Tudis Market Insight video provided to you by Obex Tavros, who is here. And today I want to talk about Aussie dollar and also the euro dollar. Aussie dollar, obviously, we've had the RBA overnight that kept rates unchanged, as you all know. Um, <clears throat> however, the Aussie is currently moving up. That's because uh, the RBA is said in a post-meeting statement that uh, they would likely scale back with the bond uh, purchases once the coronavirus uh, situation starts improving in order to support, of course, employment. Now, on the EU side, um, I really want to pay attention to the euro because things become a bit more complicated with how the dollar is going to perform and how the EU um, is going to assist the European countries because uh, lately, we've been uh, we've been seeing uh, some sort of fight uh, against uh, the um, European Commission and how they are uh, willing to help European economies. But this sort of support uh, comes into play with uh, strings attached to the EU assistance, right? And uh, a lot of um, presidents and leaders actually claim that in a situation like this, where there is a pandemic actually affecting the economies, uh, there shouldn't be anything, any strings attached. And any uh, program that is likely to help economies shouldn't really uh, be tied to any uh, austerity rules. Now, um, on the other news, it seems that there is now a potential cure for the coronavirus. This is called hydroxychloroquine, which is a treatment that used to be used for malaria, as actually still does. Um, however, <clears throat> Trump has been tweeting about it, but the thing is that there is no clinical trials that have really proven that this actually is the case. There was a small um, sample case for uh, like 40 patients in France However, the results there um, were considered to be uh, random because in, in other cases, the same drug was used without any effects being uh, seen. Now, without further ado, let's jump onto the uh, Aussie dollar first. Okay, and then uh, we'll go on to the uh, euro dollar. I want to start with the daily chart just to give you an idea of what I'm looking for right here. Um, I'm looking for another move to the upside to take out wave four of the cycle degree, right? Because I see this as an impulse to the downside. So in the primary, we had three, four, and five completed down in the fresh low. Uh, and that in, at the same time also completed um, an ending triangle over here. One, two, three, four, and five, right? Now that suggests, of course, that we are going to see an A, B, and a C to take out four, and then continue with the downside to take out wave five. Now, since we are looking at the very long term here, right, I want to go a little bit down on the two hours chart to have a look. One second, let me just <clears throat> make this look a little bit more, uh, you know. So, as I was saying, you know, you've seen the, we've seen this move to the upside uh, over the past few hours, right? Now, to me, uh, this means one thing. Now, first of all, this looks like a leading triangle for me, to me, right? So we are probably on the A intermediary over here. This is a correction B, which either finished over here, B intermediate, right? Or is going to continue down and finish down here. Okay, once, of course, we see this level holding, okay, because it could simply be a sharp correction and then we see prices moving down low. And then we're going to see another move to the upside to take out A. Then A, we're going to beat B, and then we're going to get C, and then look for prices to move all the way down. Now, this is, of course, medium and long term, but in the, so in the short term, I will be looking to see what's really happening around the 62, 13 level, okay? Now, with this move to the upside, over the past few hours, and if we go down on the one-hour chart, okay, it's clear, it's clear that this is a corrective move, right? And it's clear that this is an impulsive move. So with that being said, this could actually become another move to the upside. So we'll have the A, B, and C ending over here. That would be the A, and then move down for B. If we cross above that level, we are most likely got A in place. If we start moving lower, we're going for B. Uh, Euro dollar, I mean, there isn't much that's changed actually since the last time we looked at this. 
uh, I'm still seeing more downsides on euro dollar as well, right? But as I said, it's, it's really, really, really depends how the dollar is going to perform as well. Something has to go up. I mean, we can't have both euro and dollar falling uh, at the same time, right? So the um, situation here is a bit more complicated, okay? There is risks to the downside for the European economy. There, there's been, of course, some uh, support in certain countries like Portugal, Greece, uh, and Poland. Uh, however, there is more and the bigger economies like Germany, Spain, Italy, that they're going to be uh, needing much more support than this. But anyway, despite that, I see this as an A, B, NSC. So I'm see this, I see this as a move to the, to the downside. It looks like an impulse to me. I mean, we have an impulse over here. Let me go down in the one hour. We have like leading triangle two, three, four, and it looks like we're gonna go for five, okay? And this wave five can extend, has to extend below that wave A in order to be considered as a zigzag, right? Once we get that W, X, and Y completed, then we can start looking for prices to move up. Now, the question is, do we really know how, how long this wave to the downside is going to be? It's gonna be minor, right? We'll have one minor, two minor, that, well, I mean, I could just say that this is three minor over here, four and five right but the question is um how long wave five is going to extend for now the other scenario of course would be that um you know we've had a b and c we ended down here and now this is one two three four and five 